Yvonne Welcome to Conversations. I'm Yvonne Lau at DePaul University, and I'm pleased to present our program featuring Asian American and other multicultural perspectives on a wide range of issues, including politics, literature, and the arts. Today, I'm very delighted to welcome back Myron Kwan. He's the legal director at the Asian American Institute, which is the region's premier pan-Asian organization committed to empowering Asian Americans through advocacy and utilizing research, education, and coalition building. AI is now affiliated with organizations in Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, and San Francisco. And he also serves as an adjunct lecturer at Northwestern's um, Asian American Studies program, and he, he's teaching there this year. And he's graduated from Berkeley and Boston University School of Law, as well as getting his MBA from our own Kellogg School of Management. So thanks for coming back, Myron. Thank you. So um, hopefully now we'll have a little bit more time to talk about your current work with the Asian American sure. Institute and and um, some of the exciting projects that you're doing. So you've served as um, AI's legal director for, what, a year now? Or uh, this only past year? Actually, only about a quarter of a year. Okay. I'm still sort of fresh uh, behind, what behind the ears in terms of uh -huh. uh, being at AI, but uh, amazingly, given the tremendous need for civil rights advocacy that uh, focuses on Asian Americans, mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of work. There's both in terms of stuff that I planned on doing, which was mm -hmm. affirmative action uh, and public contracting um, and the city of Chicago, and then just all sorts of other stuff involving education, CPS, uh, language access and healthcare institutions, um, and even that awful Mike North um, fiasco uh, involving mm -hmm. the naming of a Senn High School. Yeah. Um, so very happy that um, we were able to get um, the two-year uh, grant from a foundation to ensure that we could add on to the staff, bring myself on as an attorney uh, to work full-time on advocacy issues, um, and again, specifically on affirmative action and the city of Chicago, but again, uh, having enough bandwidth to try and address other issues that um, can probably bear easy, low-hanging victories um, with a legal perspective. So for those people, just in case they're not familiar with affirmative action, sure. and I think it's been mired in a lot of controversy, what does affirmative action mean, let's say, to a young person or somebody who's going to school? You know, sure. How does affirmative action work in let's say, local schools or even public universities? Sure, um, that's a great question. And, and again, there's a case currently pending uh, before the United States Supreme Court where, for the, you know, really they intend to revisit Brown versus Board of Education. Mm -hmm. uh, that case has been around for over 40 years. It might even be close to 50 at this, closer to 50 at this point, mm -hmm. where the U.S. Supreme Court held that separate uh, but equal was unconstitutional that you could not um, create different school sites and different uh, even different classrooms based on race and in order to address that there's been many years of litigation many approaches to try and ensure that um, all students have equal access to the various uh, resources in the public school system um, the current issue has to do with whether to what extent can public schools choose to voluntarily uh, use race as a part of their decision-making process when it comes to the placement of students. So again, the two cases that are occurring in other parts of the country involve challenges um, by white families who do not want race to ever be a part of the decision-making process. Um, and so that's sort of like it in a nutshell. Basically, race can be a part of the decision-making process uh, when one talks about affirmative action, when the opponents to affirmative action really just want to make sure that race is just never addressed, that everything is colorblind, but unfortunately, even now in 2007, it's quite clear that this country still operates based on ways that impact um, communities of color in a different manner, including Asian Americans, and to be to approach the world in a colorblind manner, given that there's still institutional racism impacting uh, minority people, that's not right. Mm. So for public schools K through 12, it would impact on the so-called magnet schools, sure. right? Or the selective schools that may use race as a It impacts in uh, systems. Race mm -hmm. cannot be ever used um, as a factor. And again, 
I find it highly problematic for multiple reasons, including, you know, there's been on, ongoing efforts to document, for example, uh, racial profiling or lack of access for different ethnic groups mm -hmm. and healthcare institutions. So it's pretty clear that, um, at least on its face, Prop 209 is something that p opponents could use to say, no, we should not track data based on race because that would go against any sort of tracking based on race. And same with hospitals, why would we ever want hospitals to track how we treat and what's going on with different uh, ethnic groups? Because that, again, would be linked mm -hmm. enough to race-based remedies and race-based approaches to looking at the world, even though, again, from either a public health perspective or many other perspectives, we, indeed, it is good to track data based on race just to show disparities, unequal treatment, what have you. Mm -hmm. And so then, I know when you were here earlier, you spoke about um, a recent case that's um, before the city of uh, Chicago. Sure. Um, um, essentially, back in 2003, there were mm -hmm. a number of lawsuits throughout the state. They involved Cook County, Safe Chicago, even the Illinois Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. where non-minority business owners, non-minority co contractors, were arguing that it was a violation of federal law to have any sort of race-based remedies. Um, fortunately, in all three lawsuits, um, more or less, they were beaten back. So, uh, just recently, at the federal level, the uh, Regents Circuit uh, Court of Appeal, federal appellate court, has ruled that um, affirmative action is set aside for uh, MBEs, minority business enterprises, and WBEs, women-owned business enterprises, are in fact constitutional and can be allowed. So that's sort of what we have at the federal level, the state. In terms of Cook County, um, uh, quite um, ironically on Lincoln's birthday, uh, the Cook County ordinance now goes into effect again for a number of years where again uh, MBEs and WBEs um, can have a shot at uh, various Cook County um, projects and contracts. Mm -hmm. And then finally the city of Chicago also has one where um, there is something available to MBEs and WBEs, but unfortunately, Asian Americans are not considered a presumptive minority group. They can still get in, but more, um, they need to fill out an affidavit, and it's just a little bit different. And again, mm -hmm. there's definitely confusion uh, when you speak to Asian American contractors in that there's no doubt the, um, the people who are the prime contractors, the folks who would hire Asian American uh, contracts as, as subcontractors, mm. uh, some just don't even think Asian Americans now qualify, so they're now targeting folks who are certified as WBEs and MBEs, but not necessarily even looking to Asian American contractors as, as qualified, certified MBEs. Mm. So I know this, um, this challenge to the city's case, um, and I was also part of that, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> that very involved case, I mean, that was very challenging, right? Or was that a wake-up call to the Asian American community that that for as as much progress as they thought they were making, right. that perhaps they haven't? Or that case is is um, can there's so many takeaways that that we can come from that case. Mm -hmm. In terms of that case, um, there's no doubt that it was a wake-up call for Asian Americans. Um, even though up until now Asian Americans have sort of been able to access various programs and be treated uh, understandably so as minority group here by the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. this is the first time that I'm aware of where Asian Americans are again kind of pushing this category of other. They're not white, but they're not, we're not going to consider them a minority like we do women. African Americans or Latinos, we're going to consider them just as sort of this other group, and we'll treat them differently. And again, partially because we were not that well developed politically, partially because we didn't have representation in the right positions of power within the city of Chicago, um, Asian Americans um, lost out in that battle. I mean, we didn't do nearly or fear, we did not fear as well as we should have. Um, and now it's sort of like an ongoing battle currently to ensure that from here on out with this program and any other programs, if you're going to be talking about minorities and who should be treated a certain way, Asian Americans should be included within that discussion and not excluded, um, not excluded.